Hello, welcome once again to Whispers in the Theatre. I'm your host, the Whispering God in the Shoe, here to continue our exciting tale, The Other Side of Myth, Chapter 8, A Past Resolve. Maybe it wasn't drumming after all. The sound was too strange for that, now that Kiara thought about it, and it didn't make sense for drums to suddenly play. She supposed it didn't make sense for it to be an unseen spell either, but sure enough, reality raised an objection. Red quivering balls of energy came flying down the road, crashing into the imp's small body. They bounced it around, one after the other, exploding each time they hit their mark. The sword flew from its hands as it bounced across the dirt. Small wings grew and carried it back, its skin aglow with marks. Another knot drum beat, and another red ball pushed in the imp's nose. Its body jerked back with hands flying up, exploding as the ball did the same. A cloud of dust swept across the road. Through the silent terror that followed came the sound of clacking bottles and wheels on soft dirt. As the sound drew closer, it came to a stop, and a whistle filled the air. The cloud around Ryeen was beginning to clear. He was all right. You guys are something else. A woman's voice came through the remains, and when it cleared, Kiara could see a figure in a green hooded shirt holding the reins of a reptilian-drawn cottage. Diana, I swear, after we check out the skirmish, we'll be at an inn in Copperstone, the woman said mockingly, and Kiara looked to Danson and Kago to see how she should react. They both smiled brightly as if this woman was proof of paradise herself, and Kago crossed his arms rebelliously as she dismounted from her perch. What can I say? he smirked. When you're as eye-catching as me, sometimes you have to run away. You can say that I'll be the official leader of our little party. I mean, frankly, you and Danson aren't fit for it. The woman crossed her arms in response and found her attention drawn to Kiara as she let out a laugh of relief. The woman pulled back her hood and red wavy hair came rolling down to her shoulder. Kiara's heart skipped a beat at the woman's rosy light skin and deep-set green eyes, and when she smiled, Kiara found words hard to grasp. The woman was tall, too, taller than Danson by an inch or so, making Kiara look like a child as she walked over. Though she wore clothes that didn't reveal much, Kiara could see the performance in her as well. This woman, more of an older teen, had the same kind of toned body as the boys, and that was more apparent as she took Kiara's hand. Hi there, I'm Diana the Bolt. She shook excitedly. Kiara noted the title and found it easier to find words. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Kiara Million, she said, and wondered about those titles and what their significance was. Did you just introduce yourself at the Bolt? Kago asked, and Diana flipped her hair. I have a suspicion you and Danson introduced yourselves by your bounty titles as well. It wasn't quite a question, but as Diana looked from Kago to Kiara, she nodded. They did. I knew it. Diana grinned victoriously, and Kago flushed. Bounty hunters came after us, 
We didn't really get a chance to use our normal names. He objected, and advanced and walked over to Ryan. He shook his head. Frankly, we weren't going to either, he admitted. Kago gasped at the betrayal. The sudden mood shift left Kiara with a bit of whiplash that didn't quite resolve itself when Diana addressed her again. I have to be honest, Kiara. I don't think I've heard of you before, and only dangerous people hang around these two. She gestured vaguely at the boys. Kago smirked in anticipation. I'm not surprised. Maybe I am dangerous. But I haven't been here long enough for anyone to really know my name, Kiara said. Here are the mainland territory. Here are the Magdalia, Kiara sheepishly corrected, and Diana's smile faded. Something didn't quite make sense. That was what the young woman's face was saying, and as Kiara's words played back to her, Kiara could see Diana's mind working. She could see her running through the halls of her memory, looking for the key that would make it all make sense. She found it. Her eyes widened, and she brought her hands together. You don't mean to tell me that you're from Nandaxia, she exclaimed, and Kago snickered. Kiara nodded, and Diana squealed. Kiara, we have to be friends. How long do you plan to travel with these two? she said, and then shook her head. It doesn't matter. They're traveling with me now, and that means I'll get to find out more about your world. She was hardly looking at Kiara now, clearly involved in whatever her imagination was conjuring. I can't believe Nandaxia exists. Don't you think you believe that too easily? Kago raised a hand, and Diana made a shooing motion. Don't ruin this for me, Kago. She said it like a warning, but Kiara could still hear the jest in her voice. The scarlet-eyed girl decided she liked this woman. The mirth was interrupted when they heard a pain groan. Their attention turned to dancing, pressing an ice wrap against Ryan's head. The swordsman groaned again as he came to. Dancing eased him up slowly handing over the ice. He didn't quite seem like he had his sense back, right until the moment he noticed his arm guard was missing and found it in the grass beside him. What happened to it? He stared sorrowfully and danced and smirked. I believe it tried to kill you. Seems that it was holding an imp that popped out the moment you lost. I can't imagine this hasn't happened before, though. There's no way this is the first time you failed. Sasha gave it to me, he said. She gave it to me when I first became an enforcer. I'm sure she did. I guess she didn't trust you all that much, Kago said sternly, and Ryan shook his head. No, it definitely wasn't her. Memories were flowing across his face. It was probably Zerva. It would have to be. If I failed against Danson and he didn't kill me, then the imp would do the job itself. You're a popular one, I take it, Diana said. What does this mean for us, exactly? If that imp failed and Ryan is sticking with us, won't that mean that Zerva will come after us herself? I'm sorry, Kiara raised a hand. What happened to that imp exactly? And who is Zerva? I happened to that imp, Diana replied. I hit it from a distance. It never stood a chance. The boys nodded. Kiara guessed that was true. As for Zerva, Diana looked between the boys. Neither seemed to have a clear answer. She's the major general of the mainland army and the one in charge of defense here in Rial, Rain spoke. Ultimately someone we don't want to cross paths with. Dunson mulled. You don't have to worry. I'll draw their attention away from you. However, 
Her platoon isn't the only ones you have to avoid. It's as good a time as any to ask what you're doing in the comlands. I doubt the brigade lost track of me. You three must have just gotten in. Raim searched the bounty head's eyes. He smiled, shaking his head. I don't know why my mind went to withholding information. I crossed path with Danson. I'm on the other side of my promise now. Danson laughed. All this time being the hero didn't change your mind. You asked as if it ever could. Diana smirked. This is about to be a big shake-up, isn't it? It's likely. And with the way the Comlands are now, the Council isn't going to like this. Which brings us to the question. Kago reeled him back in. Why are you in Rial? There have been a lot of reports coming in lately. Much is afoot in this nation. To start, the notorious smuggler and pirate, the Sea Father, has been spotted up and down the coast. The higher-ups are worried that something big is about to happen. You all mentioned the skirmish. That started with the rebellion claiming they take one of the cities in the south. There have been unverified reports of an unknown group making their way from the western coast. There have also been reports of ritual magic, drawing the eyes of another person you should avoid. Thomas Wilder. Sounds like we chose a poor vacation spot. Danson stroked his chin. Frankly, you did. If anyone made a mistake, it was probably that they thought you'd avoid this area. The real mistake is that they thought we weren't troublemakers. Diana shrugged. I suggest avoiding making trouble you can't confront. Rayin smiled as he looked over them. He turned to Kiara. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about you. And I can't guess what your goals are. But can I make a suggestion? She nodded, and he went on. I think this group is a good one to stick with. I've read some of the reports on their actions. They don't act maliciously. The look in his eyes served to prove this more than his words. Blue, they could only speak the truth, swearing to it on the very thing that made them shine. Could she say she was on the fence any more? Probably, but she slanted more to the other side. Diana added a piece to this group. Kiara wasn't in the company of villains. And what will you be doing? Kago cocked an eyebrow, and Raine picked up the arm guard. My best to lead them away from you all. He smiled, and Kago averted his eyes. Diana thought about this and tossed a crystal to Raine. It's filled with stitching tonics. I hope that helps, she said, and Raine smiled. I'm sure it will. Raine, I'll be very upset if this is the last time we meet, Dunson said. The swordsman laughed. It'd be a terrible way to end our story, right? He found and sheathed his sword. Turning to them one last time, he spoke. By the way, I think you are right. I'm not an enforcer anymore, so call me Aladdin. He left his departure at that, entering the brush to disappear entirely. Kiara imagined him scaling a tree when he got out of sight and running between the branches. She heard nothing to tell her this was the right way to think, but she didn't hear him hunting them either. It seemed bright for Magdalia, too. Even in this clear countryside, it didn't seem inclined to behave. She thought over Raine's words and took in the trio. The black-clad assassin, Kago, the elven ice mage, Danson, and now the tall redhead, still a mystery, but already on good standing. A big part of Kiara wanted to go home, 
but a small part wanted to see where traveling with them would take her. Dunson went up to the cottage on wheels. We still have a bit of time left before we can go to our destination. How about we camp outside tonight? He offered. Diana scoffed. I can already see I won't like traveling with you two. You got to sleep in spacious rooms, but I have to sleep in the house for the third day in a row. She sighed. Kago joined Denson, and she sighed again. I hope you're prepared, Kiara. There's going to be a lot of rough in it when you're with us three. She turned a smile to her. That sounded about right, and Kiara didn't have an objection. She breathed away some of the worries from her world. Despite Diana's disappointment, she thought she'd love the experience. Chapter 8 Ends And so too ends another episode of Whispers in the Theater. I would be delighted if you were to join me once again.